Hello and welcome to another TCAP recap. Tonight we are looking at John Wesley Elliott, also known as Bald Beaver Hunter. That's right, folks, the Bald Beaver Hunter. <laughs> I mean, he, you'll see, he seems like a mild mannered guy in person, but I guess his online persona is the Bald Beaver Hunter. And he tells the decoy that he spends a lot of time in the dark on his computer masturbating. He also mentions that taking photos of himself while he's masturbating is a hobby along with computers. <laughs> and you can see how they combine. So, I mean, it makes sense for him. But that's a brief exterior shot of Bald Beaver Hunter. This is a profile pic right here. Just no objectivity whatsoever. No, <laughs> no insight that he he looks better with a shirt on than off. This is not what pe this is not what people want. I mean, let alone ladies, and definitely not thirteen year old girls. I actually I think Johnny went for a twelve year old, uh, which once again sets him apart a little bit. Him and Jason Ahia. Uh, both one for 12 year olds they're just a lower class of scum but he also just i mean the mustache the fat <laughs> come on dude you couldn't look more like a child molester seriously the, uh, even the patterns back here make you think like uh mama's boy or something just real ugh. but then you see him in person and he's he's a mild mannered like i said mild mannered he I don't want to say he's a nice guy, but he just doesn't seem very aggressive or, like, dominant in any way. He just seems like a total beta, total beta cuck. I mean, he is married, so, and the marriage is not going well. It could be because his wife is cuckolding him, but I highly, highly doubt it. It's probably because he spends so much time naked masturbating in the dark with his computer probably chasing down young girls um he told his wife that he went for a drive tonight and so i guess she's probably in bed just either used to it or freaking out like why is he going for such a long drive to get into an accident and john's just like oh, oh, oh i'm here oh, oh. like a fucking moron uh just entering this domicile of doom for him it's his destiny <laughs> All the decisions in his life, every single one, was leading him to this moment, this door, where he stepped into a new trajectory of life, because John, I mean, he didn't get it light. He, uh, sadly enough, his wife actually died in 2012 while he was still in prison. He got seven years in prison, which isn't enough in my opinion but it's a lot for a t-cap predator to get you know usually they especially like long beach a lot of just probation and rso registry which better than nothing uh definitely need to keep tabs on these motherfuckers so rso is essential but yeah his poor wife who presumably is innocent in all this had to go through the stress of him being on to catch a predator. Things are always going already going bad because God knows what he's up to back at the house. And he's in prison, the one being punished, and she's the one that dies. I don't know how she died, anything like that, but it is very tragic. Uh, but let's get started enough about <laughs> the sadness. Uh... Here we see Bald Beaver Hunter entering his hunting grounds, his prey staying two steps ahead of him, being much smarter, younger, and more agile. Uh, let's let's see how his approach goes. Factory worker for a window company. He's driven two and a half hours to meet a girl who told him she was 12 and home alone. It's after one o'clock in the morning. I was just watching some TV. Come sit down. All right. 
We've hired this 19-year-old actress, Casey, to be our decoy. Elliot seems to think she... Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. Shout out to Stacy Babst uh, for posting this. Thank you a lot. All right, let's go. Ball Beaver, he's about to ask to use the bathroom. Like a fucking pig. I mean, driving 2.5 hours, understandable that you'd have to piss, but do it at the gas station, dude. Don't make it the first thing you do when you come in. Uh, you know, if this girl was of age, if she was also 39, it would still be fucking rude to come in and be like, oh, can you use your bathroom? I, I guess not rude. Like, you know, everybody pees. But, and it's better than wrecking her bathroom with a number two. I mean, this dude, you could do some... <laughs> you could tell that he just crushes porcelain. <laughs> um, but... Still, it's just gross. It's kind of like, ooh, let me introduce my bodily fluids that you don't want into your house. It's invasive. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. It just feels, you know, he's urinating to, like, mark his territory. Or God knows what else he's doing in that bathroom. He's not in there too long, thank God, but I would not want to be the first person to go in there after he got out. Let's go. He's the 12-year-old virgin he's been chatting with online for the past month. Using a screen name so disturbing we can't broadcast it, he tells the decoy about his fantasy of being with a young girl. You were asking me about what I was daydreaming about. Well, that's it. You nude and... This... This is also not a good picture. I mean, he looks younger. Way younger. But he looks way fatter. <laughs> like, he's got the tube chin going on. The tube neck. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, they just gave you the facts. 2.5 hour drive to meet a 12 year old virgin, which seems like, obviously, hopefully, that would be the case. But he's weird about it. Uh, he actually has questions about why this girl is so into him. So, I guess on the phone call, he's not quite convinced. Like, why would this girl be into the bald beaver hunter? But, you know, these guys convince themselves of anything they make it their fantasy they keep thinking about it it is not internet addiction like uh, good old Chris Hansen likes to claim every time he asks are you addicted to the internet I want to just like shake him and be like Hansen internet has nothing to do with it dude fast forward 15 years we're still talking about you and your show but we're also on the internet eight hours a day for work and then another eight hours off work well not everybody i mean i'm on i'm online for work eight hours a day eight and a half but i try to stay off it later but don't do it i guess tv counts as internet so then i'd be fucked because i'd be on the internet all day all right enough about me let's see what was elliot daydreaming about well turn new me looking you he continues to chat with the decoy about his fixation with giving her oral sex and adds that as he's talking to her, he's nude and thinking bad thoughts. Uh, I just never thought I would openly tell a young girl that. What do you want? Is okay with me. But as soon as I saw your pic, I was like, man, I'd give anything I could to have one night with her. Um, Walls already pointed this out in his commentary, but this does not make any sense. But as soon as I saw your pick, I was like, man, and then a million exclamation points. I give anything I could have one night with her. Dude, I, it's fucked up, of course, but he's like, he's not cursing or anything. It's like he's trying to be, trying to be very good about doing this heinous deed. It's this weird dichotomy where, <clears throat> I mean, we see it in a lot of predators. They are convinced that they're good people even though they're caught red-handed in the act of trying to defile a child but I mean he's it's just very clear <laughs> with bald beaver hunter I mean the bald beaver hunter that's a that's a name so so explicit they couldn't say it on television at one point, he tells her his hobby is taking pictures of himself masturbating and then sends the decoy some of those shots. And he doesn't stop there. Oh, Lord. 
I'm sure they're out there. I don't want to see them, so I don't look. But, again, what about this? Does this guy have no frame of reference? Or, well, of course he does, because he probably watches a shitload of porn. So he knows that fit men are not like this. But I guess he, he it's what he's got to work with. It's all he's got to work with. Uh, he's not going to pull a Jeff Stacy and send pictures of, like, buff dudes pretending that it's him <laughs> until he shows up like the Muffin Man. <laughs> the Pillsbury Dough Man. The Pillsbury Predator. Oh. Sorry, Pillsbury. All right, let's go. Later, he sends her child pornography, a photo of a girl engaging in a sex act. Whoa, what the fuck, dude? Here ya go. A pick I have had Girl for a long time. That <laughs> is a weird way to introduce child porn to a conversation. Fuck, uh, it's just so, like, it's worse because it's so bizarrely and, like, coldly said. He sounds like a serial killer. A sex act. That girl is young. How young? I think 14. Wow. At one point, he seems to fear she might be a policewoman. But as wow. you can see, that doesn't stop him from showing up. How did you find the lockout so bad? Um, yeah, it's the first door on the left. I let him. So you can see her pause there because in the past, this is Bowling Green, so he's one of the, the Bowling Green Seven. They finally figured out the bathroom situation, like they would just let him use it, because both him and Richard Watwood use it in Bowling Green. But then they figured, you know, let him pee first, and then they're more likely to stay for the interrogation. But then for some reason, Hanson forgot about that and had Joshua Cologne in Hanson v. Predator come out of the dark bathroom, not having pissed. He still sat for the interrogation, and then it was funny because you knew he was suffering the entire way there. But, oh, shit, you know what? Richard Botwood didn't have a chance to use the bathroom, I don't think. Anyway, <clears throat> it has nothing to do with John Wesley Elliott here, so forget about that. Go to the bathroom, and when he came out, he seemed a little more relaxed. She's so smug, she's like, I let him go to the bathroom, and because of that, he was more relaxed, so this is the following interrogation, you know, big props to me. He was a little... No, props, props to Casey, I mean, this is a tough job, I'm sure, and she did a good job. More comfortable that, you know, okay, she let me go to the bathroom, we're gonna be here a while. Gosh, you're pretty. Thank you. So what are your plans, or what are you Gosh, thinking? pretty. Kissing you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has this act where he's just like this, uh, you know, lovable doofus. <laughs> gosh, you're pretty. Not, goddamn, girl, you sexy. No, gosh, you're pretty. Kissing you. Not, you know, raping you. So, again, there's that dichotomy where he's trying to, on the one hand, be a decent guy, but he's being decent about doing something super indecent. So, it doesn't help. It just makes him seem creepier and weirder. Like, he's hiding something. Like, again, he's hiding being a murderer or something crazy. Was... Sorry, not crazy. Crazy has nothing to do with, with this. Uh, just more of a sociopath, I guess. Psychopath. You know what? how we talk on the internet. As the decoy. Oh. See, he doesn't want to have to do that kind of talk in person because he feels awkward about it. He wants the internet to just, you know, take care of that and they can go straight to it and she'll just do whatever they talked about. And he won't have to say any of those sexually explicit things or even sexually suggestive things because that's tough to do with another person. You know, you, you still can be rejected. Uh, you put yourself out there, you're getting vulnerable, you're doing something maybe you, you don't do normally. Anyway, he, you see this in a lot of guys, 
a lot of predators want are like why aren't you talking like you know Jeff Sokol's like you're not like you were in the chat because he doesn't want this nervous Nelly he wants the you know sexually uh, interested teen from the chat or whatever Chris calls him but doesn't work doesn't work for bald beaver hunter he presses him, he stops smiling and seems to get suspicious. She asks him about that photo he sent her of the girl receiving oral sex. Oh, that picture you sent me yeah. with the 14-year-old girl. Was she really 14? I don't know. I just found it off of a guy off the internet when we were talking. Damn. Okay, so Casey's not the best. <laughs> she does a decent job, but not a great job. She's just so forward and direct. Uh... You, you see her do this at the Ocean County, New Jersey sting a little bit as well, where she tries to get people to, you know, just sit down. Uh, she does it to Ernest Timmons, actually, when he's trying to just, like, hurry upstairs to take some pictures. She's like, no, sit down, sit down. And she does it here, too, like, asking a really pointed question that probably wouldn't be asked by an actual 12-year-old, excuse me. God, it just sounds so much worse. Oral sex. Yeah, like, oh, that picture you sent me yeah. with the 14-year-old girl. The 14-year-old Was she girl? really 14? I don't know. I just found it off of a guy off the internet when we were talking. Is that, like, what you wanted to do? That's what I want to do, but I can't. I just... Uh, he just straight up admits it anyway. He's trying to, like, hedge a little bit. Oh, just some guy got it off the internet. Bullshit. And what kind of weird... Oh, just imagine that kind of transaction, like pedophiles exchanging kitty point. It's just, oh, the whole thing is just makes your skin crawl. But, you know, now he's trying to hedge his bets, hedge his words a little bit, and then just straight up admits, yeah, that's what I wanted to do, but now I'm having second thoughts. Like every other predator, <laughs> he says, he pulls the old, oh, I was driving over here and halfway there, Started having second thoughts and decided it's not right and I wasn't going to do it because I'm a good guy. I'm a good guy, as Chris Hansen would say. There's something in me that just... I'm still working on my Chris Hansen impressions, so I apologize. They're, they're going to get better. I'm going to put some, some real time into it, some serious training, rather than just joking around, and I'll get there. Don't worry. I just, it's not right, you know, and it's really bothering me. Then why are you there, and why did you just admit what you wanted, that you wanted to have oral sex with her? If it's really bothering you, you're a fucking liar, bald beaver hunter. And he's trying to hide, again, behind that, like, oh, well, you know, well, well. acting like a little boy when he's a 39-year-old man, just this very puerile immature attitude or like facade not immature that he's reckless but that he's he's so unconfident you seem pretty confident on the internet in terms of what you wanted to do what was your plan tonight <laughs> internet in terms of what you wanted to do oh, oh. <laughs> okay he doesn't make any good sounds or anything or <laughs> like movements but <laughs> Bloop. that's that's a sh surprised face uh he thinks chris is a counselor <laughs> or a therapist eventually who knows what he thinks right now but he comes to the realization that chris hansen must be a therapist there to help him with his problems what was your plan let's see if you can see that you be the judge. Does Chris Hansen come across like a therapist? Actually, I wasn't really going to be doing anything because I was already getting too scared and nervous about it. Now, why were you getting so scared and nervous? Lies. Well, I just knew it wasn't right. But that's not how you made it sound on, online. I know. And what about the photos he sent of himself masturbating? Why'd you do it? Well, just everything in my life is just, it's all screwed up. Oh man, job. just to be faced marriage is not good. with those pictures just thrown back in your face. And those are the uncensored pictures, so Chris, number one, was looking at him. 
and now he's handing them across this big open space and <laughs> bald beaver hunter's dick is just for I mean the room's empty yes but it's being filmed number one uh, John doesn't know that yet but it just must be so awkward to have this other man hand him his <laughs> his own masturbating photos maybe he's proud because that is his hobby so guess we can't you know we can't be ashamed for him only he can be ashamed for himself we can just be really really disgusted by him himself so, masturbating why'd you do it well just everything in my life is just it's all screwed up that was a funny way that chris asked it why'd you do it and the way he kind of just he looks and what about the photos he sent of himself so he masturbating a bit. why'd you do it and he's messing with whatever this is in his hands so i guess you know he's he's well just pocket. everything in my life is just it's all screwed up i've got a bad job my marriage is not good did you bring any condoms no, I wasn't going to do anything like that. Yeah, what were you going to do? It was just oral. Oh. Just oral. Well, I didn't think it was that bad on oral. She told you sh What? <laughs> just oral. Well, I didn't think it was that bad on oral. I guess, I don't know, something... Anyway, he's pretty blunt that he wanted to engage in criminal activity with this girl and rape her orally rape her or I guess he's using his tongue to rape her either way he's so casually admitting this it's fucked up it makes again it's like this weird seeing good good behavior on top of evil behavior just makes it so much more discomforting she told you she was 12 years old yeah and you came over here planning to have oral sex with a 12-year-old girl. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to deny it. I mean, it's... Yeah, I did. When I ask him about his obscene screen he's name, he's he starts to laugh. <laughs> you think this is funny? No. It's just... a big joke. No, Come no. Over here. He does seem to not... Like I said, he doesn't have the right attitude for it. It's, it's bizarre. You're to have sex with a 12-year-old girl, and this is a big, big old joke to you. No, no. What I'm getting at is, uh, this is the very first time this has ever... How is that a logical jump? Maybe they edited something out? Because uh, that didn't make much sense. Have, I've never met... It's the first time you got caught, maybe. No. Right. So what made you no, decide, no. all of a sudden, to do it now? I mean, you've been chatting with this girl for a month. It just... I've had that fantasy in the back of my head. Fantasy. About being with a young girl. A young girl, yes. Well, what do you think should happen to you? Such a so he had a pretty cool approach to the house and coming inside. He seemed, I mean, he's not a confident guy in any way, but he seemed comfortable enough doing it. So, And he admits to the KBI, Kansas Bureau of Investigation lady, he admits that he's been he chats a lot now but he used to chat a lot more back in the day so he's been doing this for decades and I just don't think that this would be the first time you don't like he said and like Stabler Detective Elliot Stabler says in SVU these perverts don't just wake up one day and decide to do it it's a lifetime and it's just hard to believe that this is the one time that he did it rather than all the other times he's almost certainly done it in the past. An island? <laughs> Sent to an island. Well, what do you think should happen to you? Sent to an island? <laughs> Sent to an island. Exactly. island. <laughs> it's so funny. Sent us to an island. <laughs> he is either acting... Sorry, my mouth is... Got that cotton mouth. Man, those dabs just sometimes <sighs> anyway he's just yucking it up uh, whether it's an act or not we'll have to see a little bit more but <clears throat> it doesn't seem like an act during the interrogation he really does seem like he just doesn't understand 
the gravity of the situation he's in at all. Uh, okay. Exile and I. He does think he's talking to a counselor right now, a therapist, but still. Uh, you still think this is all No, fine? I don't know why you ask so you're, me you're, stuff like this. I mean, well, why do you think I'm curious about all this? I can tell you're a therapist, I know. This dude is just so stupid. <laughs> I guess when you get down to it, that's the answer to all the questions about why he's such a weirdo. He's just too stupid to understand. Like, he's he's got this low cunning and good intuition. But overall, he's just very stupid. And he can't think on his feet. He can't process things on his feet. He has to take the long way around every time uh during the interrogation he doesn't seem to understand what he's admitting to and it's all very humorous but it also got him seven years in prison so had real consequences and i can't imagine this dude in prison surely he had to be in segregation because he would get fucking shanked He's just too soft and fluffy for prison, man. He's too chubby and just uh, not fat in, like, the heavy way, just fat in the unhealthy way. I mean, not just... You think I'm a therapist? Yeah, by the way, you're... Let's see I can tell you're a therapist. You're, you're, you're stuff like this. I mean... Well, why do you think I'm curious about all this? I can tell you're a therapist. I know. <laughs> I mean, not just... You think I'm a therapist? <laughs> yeah, by the way, you're... Do you think that you came over here to meet this girl by and... The way you're what? You think I'm a therapist? Yeah, by the way, you're... Do so you think that you came over here to meet this girl and magically a therapist sat down to help you through your problem? When Chris says it, it sounds so much more implausible. But it also sounds implausible when John Wesley Elliott says it, too. Because why would a therapist be the one to greet you when you come to commit this crime? It's like breaking into a bank and your accountant's there, or a accountant, an accountant is there, to help you with your taxes, to get you like a nice tax return of a thousand dollars when you're in a bank vault, you know, and the police are there. But you know, again, points to John Wesley Elliott, Paul Beaver Hunter, being in like the very bottom bracket of predator intelligence. Uh, definitely very low. Like you got Doctor Wool Woolen at the top. You got this guy near the bottom. I mean, there's a crowd down there, so he's not alone, but he's even near the bottom of that crowd. I don't know. I don't, don't know. know. Uh -uh. Well, do you, uh, you ever watch television? No, sir. All right, well, there's something I got to tell you. I'm Chris Hansen, mm -hmm. and I work for a show called Dateline NBC. Okay. And we're doing a story on adults who try to meet young teenagers online for sex. Okay. It's called To Catch a Predator. So if there's a... I don't think he's dazed when he's saying okay. Like most, like Jerry Griffith, he, he says okay. When it's revealed that Chris has the chat logs, he's just dazed in that situation. I think Bald Beaver Hunter is just taking it in stride. He's like, you know, like we've been talking about, he's too stupid to comprehend the, the seriousness of the situation and what this means for him in the future. And he's just, you know, a therapist showed up to help him. Of course, a camera crew is filming all this. Why not? Okay. Okay. Uh, this guy is quite the creature, man. Uh, how he managed to make it this long in life with these urges inside, uh, not getting caught doing something creepy earlier, is... It's hard to fathom why, like how he made it and how he got a wife in the first place. But uh, let's just see the further, the rest. It's it's funny. Anything else that you'd like to tell us about your situation? We'd like to hear it. You know, I love my wife, and I know it doesn't look like it. I need to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> yes, again. Oh my God, Johnny. <laughs> Your wife is not the issue right now. Like, that's the least of your problems, dude. <laughs> He's thinking, like, oh, man, I'm going to have to sleep on the couch tonight. <laughs> She's going to make me sleep on the couch when this therapist drops me off at home. <laughs> because the way everything's going for my life. All right. Well, why don't you go ahead and... Yeah, see you I hope you get that help. 
As he gets up to leave and makes the long walk to the door, officers are in position ready to arrest him. Sheriff's office, hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up. <laughs> Again, he has that kind of like slow, oh yeah, the cops, okay, sure. Sheriff's office, hands up, hands up. Oh, hands out, hands out. Ooh, reaction. He's taken away in an unmarked car Actually, and brought to a police station where he's booked, photographed, thank you, sir. And brought in for questioning. Had an interesting night, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, really. To say the least. He's still. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the most exciting thing that's ever happened. Well, John, you're about to have an exciting seven years, I guess. <laughs> He's read his rights, and Kentucky Bureau of Investigation agent Catherine Reed starts to question him. What brought you here tonight, John? Just fantasy. What kind of fantasies? Props to Catherine Reed, Agent Catherine Reed. She is masterful in this interrogation. We'll get to those someday. But she does such a good job of playing this dude, uh, getting real close, like really focusing and exuding her her femininity, and just it. <laughs> John has no defense against it to a woman being nice to him and like showing interest in him, and he spills it all. So that's why he got seven years because there was also child porn involved. Um, yeah, he. He's something else. He's a big boy. He's, I mean, I'm looking through just like some of the info on him and he's so bland outside of everything else. He, he worked at a, uh, a door manufacturing company, 39 years old, working at the manufacturing company, making doors. And one of his first questions in his interrogation is about, he's worried about telling, telling the agent where he works if there's cameras listening, because he's not supposed to say. All right, let's just finish this up. I don't want to be with a young girl. I'm not saying it's right or anything like that. I don't mean to make it sound that way. So you knew it was wrong when mm -hmm. you came here. Agent Reed gets the man's consent to search his car and retrieve his computer from his home. He signs all his rights away. He's then taken to jail. And later brought before a judge. You were charged with unlawful oh. transaction with a minor less than 16 years of age, first degree, which is a class B felony. Do you understand that charge? Yes. Busted the judge man. sets his bail. Your bond will stay at 50,000 cash. Woo-wee! 50,000 cash. That's a big chunk of dough. But, all right, we'll wrap this up. It's a little over 30 minutes, so not too bad. But we'll let that let that ride for John Wesley Elliott, a.k.a. Bald Beaver Hunter. Thanks for listening, everybody, and we'll catch you next time. Take it easy.